again guys welcome to another episode excited so much to show you another project that we are just about to start on this uh, on this particular episode i'm going to take you through the nitty gritties specific spaces and how we are going to treat them a big transformation awaits you to see let's go so guys one by one room by room I'm going to tell you what we are doing in this particular project. This is the mud room. In this mud room, we are actually going to entirely remove these cabinets. My client wants complete wood finish, if not uh, spray painted kind of uh, look. And uh, as you can see, all these cabinets have been made in melamine particle boards, something that he's not so much into. Secondly, the workmanship that was done in this house in pertaining uh, joinery is not uh, to the standards. So most of the items that have been done here, if you look at them properly, you can see even the lipping is a 0.5 mm type of lipping. Not the best for long lasting or durability in terms of cabinetry. So we are going to remove, we'll go either for 2 mm or uh, 1 mm at least for the front looks. And if not, we are going to spray paint and the cabinetry on the inner part or anything that is exposed is going to be blockboard spray painted or wood spray painted. So this is going to be removed. Then we come up with a completely new look and uh, it's actually the look right now as per the design on the on the 3ds is spray painted in a dark gray finish so that is it for here and then we are going to put some beautiful hooks so that as you walk into this space like this you get a, a, a hooks so that when if you are putting on a, a, a jacket or anything that you do not do not need to move around with you can come and hook them here the walls have not been nicely done if you can zoom in properly you will see the bumpy walls around maybe when I go around you will see the bumpy walls if you see if you can check the corners the walls are not so nicely uh, skimmed so the entire house is going to remove to, to, to get proper skimming then that is it for the mudroom as you walk in you can see even the the, the arches in uh, wood finish very nice selection of, uh, of, of theme but if uh, the skimming, the, the sanding and the polishing was not done properly, even the aging, if you look around, you can see some holes that are, that are not so nicely done. The joints were not properly aligned. So we are going to uh, remove this and uh, put it together properly and then mount it back and then sand it properly so that it, it gets proper finish. And it happens, it happens on all the doors. Even the architraves will supply new architraves. The gaps inside the doors, you can see on this side, we are going to fill all that. Then that side also, proper finishes of the, of the sides so that everything looks properly done, the walls and all that. So as I walk out of the mudroom, I walk into, my, into, into the Dobby area. We have redesigned the entire, th the entire thing. So in this layout, this was going to be the place where we'll have the, the wash, wash machine and all this was going to be tied so that the machines would go in there. And then this was the place where the sink was to be. But in our design, we have made it in such a way that the sink comes against the wall. So the guy washing or the guy using the Dobby sink will be against the sink. And then as you do a turn, just there's a, there will be a very small space around here for probably that it will be the, the work, work top or work surface. Then as you move to the right hand side, we don't need actually this cabinet to go all the way. So up to the height of 900 millimeter, we have a very nice uh, uh, top in uh, either granite or uh, marble. And then under it is where we'll have the dry and uh, wash machines. And then the other surface from there, we'll just have the high level cabinets. And then we'll have our hooks for drying the clothes around here, hanging all, all the way to that side. So it is a cabinet that will take an L shape, move like this, then all the way to the other side. And uh, 
that is it. And then on the walls, we are actually opting not to use a lot of uh, stonework or maybe the, the, the tiles. So we're doing no tiling on this area, apart from the backsplashes that are duplicate, that is a duplicate of the, of the granite top that we are going to use. And that is it because this basically, because it's wash machines, it is not necessarily a wet area. So, and uh, also, as I told you, we listen to our clients, we listen to what they like, their views, and this, my client, is not into tiling so much. So we are going to reduce the number of tiles and spaces as much as we can. So let's walk into the kitchen. Guys, I'm inside the common area. This is the kitchen of this house. I'm going to be very brief just to mention the items that we're doing here. First of all, we are doing the flooring. As co uh, uh, commonly in Kenyan style, we normally do tiles as the floor material for the for kitchens. My style in this house is an American style. Most American houses, the kitchen is more wood finishes and all that. So we are going to have the wood finish in this kitchen because it flows all the way to the lounge, the dining, and the other common areas. So the entire kitchen, the floor, will be wood. So the layout. Normally, when I come to a site, I do my due diligence before even when, before, before sitting down to do a design or before sitting down to discuss with the client. So in this case, I came in as you, if you look around, I've done my demarcations on the floor. This is what goes here, what goes there, what goes there, what goes there, and all the way to the other side. And this being the kitchen now, with all the measurements of the accessories, appliances that I'm gonna use, before I even sit down to even do a discussion with my clients, that is what I do. And normally when I get to the site, I do my even my calculations from the onset. You can see this depicts the heights, the minus of the piece that is gonna be on top. The 600 depicts the tile area or the where the high level start. The 1500 is the space that remains on top and all that and all that. So that by the time you sit with your client, you exactly know the details. You exactly know what kind of uh, appliance or what size of the appliances that you are going to use. And even before you even transfer the information to your designers, you have each and every item in your head, in your fingertips. And even if the client woke you up at 2 p.m. and asked you, what are you doing here? You exactly know. And you can discuss ways around and uh, even modify things, but with knowledge. So in this kitchen, we're having our fridge here, the inbuilt fridge, fridge actually, a double fridge, a microwave and oven, a worktop. We are going to have a, a, a shape here, a funny shape, but a beautiful shape actually. If you see it on the design, this is where we are going to have our cooking area. So our hob comes here. Luckily enough, the electrical point has been provided, so we'll just confirm if it's a 6 mm or 4 mm uh, electrical cable that has been provided. So we have to ensure uh, that uh, all the electrical appliances that go into the kitchen receive the proper size of, uh, of, the, uh, of, the, of the cables. Then. Another new thing, we are going to have a tap on top of the hob so that uh, when you're cooking, you don't need to move around and all that. So you fetch your water from there to the pan or to the pot and the movement is reduced. On top here, we have a hood. Then here, my calculations plus the curtain rod cannot allow me to have a, a high level cabinet. So all this area will be the low level cabinets. In between this window, I'll have my double, uh, my double sink. I'm going to have a very beautiful deep sink that comes here. Then I move on. Around here, I will have my washing machine. So I'm going to work around the, the, the plumbing works so that I have the water on that side and water on this side. But that one will come during the construction process. Then as I come, as I take this, I have my high levels here in my kitchen ends there. If you check the floors also, I've demarcated nicely how this kitchen will move. It is, it, it is shapey, but for me to have a proper looking kitchen, I'll have to follow this uh, formula for me to have it look proper. Then, 
I've also done my, my, my mathematics, my calculations, so that uh, uh, I have my things in place. So if I did like this and like this, I have like roughly 1.2 meters from the other side, and this is where I will lay my island. And this island, is, if you look around, you will see cables, and this is a 6 mm properly supplied. We have pipes around here, and uh, this is uh, probably for, uh, for, for a sink. So this kitchen will have uh, a cabinet on this side, and this cabinet is the cabinet that will hold the cooker, yes, because on that on that side, we are having a cooker, which is a common cooking area that is for for regular cooking. Then here we'll just have the flat pan, where if you wanna warm something, the easy or the not the the more easier type of cooking or the or, or the warming type of cooking will come here. And then in the middle, I'll have just a cabinet with the probably drawers. Then on this other side, I I will have a sink, and. Uh, I need just to remember properly because I'm presenting without my drawings. I'm not so sure, but I will go and check my notes if the client removed the sink on this island. Because on this other end, if you check the layout, the cabinet is straight on the front side. Those are those are those are do drawers, 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 do drawers. Then on this other side, we have. Um, a very big leg or a big uh, pedestal on the on the on the on the left side and a big pedestal on the on the on the right hand side and then the marble overlaps the counter to give an allowance of roughly around 300 millimeters so that when you have your bus tools you can comfortably sit here and talk to the person or the persons in the kitchen and enjoy your space that is it for the kitchen as i move on to the other side this is the kitchen look so here we, we plan to just have easy seating, probably um, a poof moving all the way to this side, just to allow that uh, if maybe something is happening on the other side and you have the kids, they can be playing around here as you are cooking. So this is the kitchen nook, it's easy. Probably we will uh, decide on the type of furniture currently. We've just provided a very small table around here, but uh, there's an option whereby we can have an L-shaped kind of a, of a nook type of, of, of furniture, whereby we have a, a cabinet under, a poof on top, and probably a back, whatever, a backer for, for the kids, then a small table in between. So that is an option to also uh, check around because probably here we're just doing the flows and the lights and the furniture can come later. Then, as I walk around, so this place, uh, what is happening, it's open plan kind of a setup where we have the kitchen, we have the dining, we have the lounge, and we have uh, a bar area. So on my far left, let me just show you, this is the bar, again, as, as usual, I will come on site, draw so many things. Please don't paint your walls before you call me. Let me come before you paint because I will come with my chalk and I will do my measurements as much as I do normally on all the sites. So this one I've also already determined even before I do the designs. So I have a sink here which will still stay. I'll have a chiller in between which is a new introduction and I have another cabinet on the, on the left hand side. This cabinet is for storage this is a chiller and this is a sink probably I'll have uh, my trash can under there then as usual this cabinet will be 900 millimeters from the floor level then it comes all the way to this uh, this height then I will have that uh, backsplash area which is roughly 600 if you check on my on my write-ups on the wall, my total height is 2430. I remain with 970. 970 minus the beam will give me the 870 that now takes up the high-level cabinet. That is for the bar. Let's move on. The, the dining is probably almost done. Uh, the only thing that we're gonna do in this space is the floor, which is nicely the wooden mahogany look. 
the scheming on the wall to just get these finishes properly done. If you check around, the walls are not uh, to the standard of this house. This house is beautifully done in terms of structure, but the finishes have not been properly met. So if you check the walls, the walls are rugged. So we are going to scheme the entire walls. We are painting something inside the, the gypsum ceilings in the niches inside so that we have a, a, a contrast between the, the brilliant white on the gypsum in the inner niches where the lights are shining from. Then we have a chandelier, we have our table, and that is it. We're also going to have some decorative wall panels on that side, decorative wall panels on that side, and that is it. Without forgetting, there are a number of columns standing in this house, and uh, I have to creatively do my things so that uh, I don't just leave things hanging. So I come around and I look and I decide and I think and I say, what can I do here that uh, will make these columns not look like they're just suspended in the middle of the, of the space? So we introduce a small wall here and another small wall on this side that is attached to the, to the staircase area that uh, this staircase is going, all the, it's now serving the upper floor. So I block here and here nicely and I'm doing some nice beautiful cladding on the wall. Then I introduce a beautiful wine cellar racks on this wall so while seated on that side this becomes a feature wall and it's beautifully done then as you walk around when you come to this other side and this is the lounge doing some nice thing on that same wall so that it's just not bare and this is the lounge the flooring we're doing doing a nice beautiful curtain skimming the walls and changing the colors probably from this color it is too much and uh, we're going to make it a bit softer and uh, also this place we are introducing some nice beautiful feature on this front side check around i've already done my calculation to know what i'm doing and how i'm going to use it and how do they uh, work around so a beautiful marble finish on this beautiful top beautiful cladding you will see it i don't want to preempt the materials and then if you check on this side and this side this side is slightly smaller as compared to that side but i want symmetry so that when i'm doing my arrangement everything is flowing and uh, it doesn't look like uh, things are out of proportion so this side is roughly this was uh, 1644 this was 1644 here. I want to get my 1644 on this other side. So what I do, I am just coming with my engineer so that we elongate this wall to this side and then create a slab on top so this fireplace will be slightly bigger. And then um, from this point to this particular point, will be a replica of the other side, will just be a mirror of the other side, that it will be 1640. And then I'm creating a false beam here, exactly like what is on my left hand side. But on the other side, I will actually now utilize this column on the lower side to store my firewood on, this, on, on that side, and maybe probably a few shells on top, and then the rest goes up, and then do my finishing properly, and that is it for the, for the lounge and a few others. So I'm doing a chandelier painting the upper, upper parts of the ceiling and that is it. So I'm walking to the bedrooms without leaving this. I'm coming out with the beautiful decorative niches in gypsum. You will sit on the design. Also, as you walk into the bedrooms, you can see the door. The intentions is to supply a beautiful mahogany door, but the mahogany itself is okay. It is well dried, but the finishing on this mahogany not properly done. That is something to talk about after we've done it, but just see how it's looking currently. Even the feeling on the joint. Look at how it is done, look at how it's done, look at. So we will come and sand this thing nicely, polish, and even the, the upper levels, the upper parts of the, of the, of the door are not well aligned. So I'll work on that to make sure that everything is to standard and that is it for there. I walk in, working something on the walls so that this place doesn't look just bare and then a kidogo decor on the on the sides. Just some nice arrangement here so that as you walk in it's a beautiful thing. Then I walk into this room. This uh, happens to be our master bedroom which is on the lower floor. 
working on something on the front side, working on the floor, working on the ceiling, skimming the walls, coming up with, the, with some beautiful curtains, and that is it for this space. But you'll see also more that I'm not even mentioning because right now I don't want to go into so many details. I'm just showing you spaces and the little things that we are doing in those spaces to just enhance. This is the master bathroom. We're having our jacuzzi around here. It, some kidogo treatment on the walls then here we will have the his and uh, the heater on top so a uh, vanity a mirror and a, ca a cabinet under then here doing some nice beautiful uh, frameless glass probably frosted to to cater for the for the shower and as you walk to this side this will be the she side whereby now i have another vanity and a sink on top a mirror light and that is it storage under then here i'll have some racks for storage in terms of uh, linen towels all that all, all those kinds of whatever so i have some floating shelves here in wood finish and that is it for that space then as i walk in this is the walk-in closet if you look uh, and, uh if you look at this house in totality in terms of uh, how the house the structure has been done outside even the paintwork this house is a grand type of house it is actually uh, a luxurious kind of house but uh, when you come to the finishes inside these things haven't been done to the standards if you can just zoom in and uh, come and check what i'm talking about is look at this door this is an mdf look at the leaping it's really chipped already and the finishes this person was trying to just a color match white and something inside which didn't come out very well if you look at the boards the way they've been cut not well done if you look at the leaping if you look at the joint the joints of these cabinets they were not well done so i want to uh, improve on this or just give a new look and uh, we are all doing jobs but uh, at times the difference comes into the details so it's at the look of it if i was to maybe give my 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 comments or my reservations about this it's not that uh, this guy has done a bad job but the only difference is the knowledge about the type of the house the knowledge about the client he's working for and even the the entire look in general how this house is supposed to look in totality when everything has been done i think this guy doesn't have a picture he was just subcontracted to do the cabinets but he doesn't have the totality look of the house the way things are supposed to blend and that's why some things are not just in place and for me if i was to be asked or whatever i'm going to do i just want to bring my own look in this home and that's why i'm coming in with a spray painted kind of doors here or spray painted kind of uh, cabinets and uh, even my doors will be spray painted the interiors will be spray painted i'm just looking at a scenario where i want my finishes to be neat to be to talk to the other in terms of cabinets in terms of the structure in terms of curtains in terms of the wall finishes in terms of glass finishes in terms of accessories in terms of appliances that are all blend together to just give this house one uniform look rather than have one item looking very nice another one not in another one not looking or not matching the standards so for me i'm coming in to revamp or to give this house a completely new look and a look that is uniform from both outside and the inside and apart from the fun the the aesthetic look i'm looking for functionality so i won't go into details of how and what i'm going to do here but stay tuned for you to see the transformation i just want my guy to just zoom into the details here and then we compare with what will be done after that a few details like that 
that cornice is supposed to move all around, go on top of that cabinet and move around this room all the way to that. That defeated this guy and he was like, I don't know where this cornice will go. So this door, when you open it like this, that cornice will not go. So I'm going to walk around so that uh, the door is slightly shorter, but my cornice to go around or remove the cornice completely so that the cabinets look like one item. Then, um, and then the door, if you look at the hinges, already they are shaky. And you, normally we just need a proper type of uh, even accessories to, to complement the entire look. On this side, we have this cabinet. We we'll look at it, probably I'm thinking of doing a beautiful shoe rack here and avoid this. I just have a beautiful space maybe for a pool for someone to come and chill and uh, change and think and maybe read a text, read an email as you are or you are in this space. Then I um, have a nicely arranged shoe rack around here and I'll have a small cabinet in between in the middle here like an island where they can put their watches the ties, uh, accessories that they use on adorning their, their, their dress codes on uh, special days. So I'll have something around there. That is just to give you a glimpse of what I'm doing in that space. So let's walk into another room. So I'm on the other side of the master bedroom. This is the mom's uh, bedroom. Again, I'm going to be as brief as possible. I'm going to just do almost exactly what I'm doing on that side. There was too much of activity on this side whereby this guy introduced a cabinet here, introduced another cabinet here with the return on this side. I'm going to be as simple as possible. I just work on a cabinet on this side, just straight, then try and see if I can adorn that wall nicely without uh, going into too many details or to be too many, too much playful, as simple as possible. I'll not enter into this other side, that is where we have our our our, our WC and an, a sink. And because uh, the lights have not been put in place, so I won't walk in because it will be dark and we've not carried our light, our spotlight. So that side, simply we are going to do plumbing, we are going to introduce a sink, we are going to introduce a mirror, we are going to do skimming and painting because currently the walls have been left rough for purposes of uh, receiving tiles. We are not going to tiles because it's not really a wet area per se, but uh, just a sink, a mirror and a tap, that is it because uh, the toilet is uh, it's completely on the side. So guys, as I walk into this space, Quickly, this is the mom's room. I'll have a, a, a cabinet here, just a simple cabinet that is for storage, so it's not a sink. And then uh, our sink is on the other side. In this other space, you see the doors, different doors, different spaces. So those are the looks that we want to unify. Also, as I walk in this side, I'm also just going to introduce a simple glass panel around here, frameless, nicely. Accessories for the uh, the, for the shower that is the, the 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 mixer, the mixer, the shower head, and the spout on the lower side. And then uh, we have another bidet on this side, and that is it for this space. Our headboard wall comes here. I'm just doing paint works, the floors. I'm I'm also coming with a nice proof on this side that uh, will just uh, move from this wall to that wall, probably coming all the way to here. That is roughly around uh, 450 from the window, and then the window curtain drapes down. Then when someone walks into the mom's room, they can sit with her here, have a conversation, then walk out without um, just having to stand up. So we are coming with that. Also this space for purposes of utility, she's in, in, in her room. We thought instead of just leaving it as a dress area, we are coming in with the cabinet all the way up so that she can have her dresses, a few of her dresses in this space instead of uh, having everything outside the room. So a few things that she will be using on that particular day, she can store them here. And that is it for that room. Let's walk to the upstairs. So 
guys, the staircase was well done. Just uh, after our works, everything has been done. We know very well that uh, things uh, would be a bit messy. I, I know we will cover it up with uh, with uh, the black paper, but we need to sand and polish because right right now, as she. As I look at it, it's not properly polished and sanded, so I'll just polish and sand. And that is it, wooden floor. Beautiful wall finish on this wall. Beautiful treatment on this wall. This is bedroom number one. Uh, a number of things we are doing. The floors, the cabinets, as I told you, we are fundies, all of us, but uh, we have different uh, ways of uh, doing things and we have different levels of perfection. So I walk in and I look at this. This guy tried to do a cabinet here just to have even something that looks like a door to bring it all the way to here. And then on this other side, it doesn't go all the way. So even the cabinet on this side and this side, they're not aligned. So I'm looking at it. I'm thinking and uh, I'm seeing even this panel that was here is not aligned to the door. It's not properly done. I have a screw under there that I can clearly see. On the side, if I was to do um, my way, you will not actually see this joint. You will not be able to see these screws because uh, that is not how I do my things. So I want to make this look neat. I will transform this space in my own way uh, just to ensure that uh, everything is uh, communicating or everything is in uh, its position. If you look at the joint here, from the top it's too tight. When you go down the bottom, you have a very big uh, hollow point and uh, which, which I think uh, it is not necessary. I would have started with a panel around here to just um, cater for walls that are not straight. And then the rest of the arrangement probably it's okay, but uh, the finishes and the way joints have been done, not my thing. If you can come so close, you can see the same thing happening here. This guy was struggling to join this side to this side. And this side, above here, it was, co it was connected. But here, he tried to introduce something. I don't know what it is, but uh, I don't know what it is. I will not go into details. But uh, I would want my things uniformly done. So again, I'll work on the walls, work on the bathroom. That is the, if you walk in here, Again, I'll do the, the vanities, uh, do the granite top on it, do a sink, do a mirror, and then uh, introduce my frameless glass partitions in the bathroom area. And uh, that will be that. Then curtains on the other side, then paint, uh, soft paints. I'm not going to do different colors. See, right now there are different colors around. I don't know what was happening because there's a color that is going all the way to here and then another color. But uh, personally, I think I'm a simple guy. So simplicity. Then I swing up to this other side, another bedroom. Something again, I'm trying to think, if you hold on these things, this is supposed to be a trill door. It's supposed to offer security. But if I pull this thing nicely, it will actually break. I don't know who was the supplier, but uh, we have I've talked to my client and we've decided for this area, we're just going to introduce beautiful metallic bifolding doors. So that is what we are doing here. Then we'll do the floors, introduce a light, introduce some panels on the walls, paint the space, come up with the shears and curtains, and that is it for that space. Then when you walk to the uh, walk-in closets, again, the same treatment in terms of uh, quality, in terms of uh, neatness, in terms of uh, arrangement, same treatment that we're doing in the other spaces. If you check this, this was a softboard or what, it's already breaking. So again, I'm doing the vanity, come up with a granite top, 
a sink on top, a mirror nicely here, and then uh, that is there. And then introduce uh, nice frameless glass partitions, and then uh, the shower accessories that is the spout, the mixer, and uh, the shower head. And that is it for this space. Let's go to the other bedroom. So, bedroom three again, joinery works, the door well supplied. The door itself is heavy, very nice for a solid door, but even the installation process, I think it wasn't done because it's not even taking itself back. I don't know if it has already worked, but I'll work on that sand polish, make sure things are in place. Then something on this front wall, again for security purposes, I'm doing my metallic grill by folding doors on that side, and then beautiful curtain rod, the curtain and the shears, then ensure all this is properly done, then the look is uniform instead of having different looks, even the inside, I just want to ensure you don't have to see so many screws, the leaping in the, in the silicone that was used uh, to join this thing. I think uh, it was done on site and this guy was even doing the leapings on site and that's why everything is just out of place. So I will work on that to make sure everything is just properly aligned. Then the door again, the finishes, if you can come closer, same type of treatment, same type of treatment here. I think he chopped the wood from side here to just make sure the door, the, the door fits. Poor workmanship, it's going to be reworked on. And then as you enter the bathroom, again, marble top, proper doors, a mirror, a light, and then uh, my frameless glass partition for the shower, then the shower accessories, that is the shower head, the mixer, and the spout, and then the details maybe as I bring the glass, I will ensure it takes the shape so that we cover up like that, going down and all the way, and have my door here. Then try and see how we can deal with this because I've seen all of these, all the bedrooms have these things in, in, in place. So I will work it out. And that is for this bedroom. There is another bedroom because we have four bedrooms on the upper floor. Another bedroom, same treatment, nice doors poor finishes, sanding and polishing and ensuring. I think I'll just remove these doors and take them to the workshop, then bring them back as I put someone to deal with the frames. Then uh, maybe introduce beautiful, or the arch these architraves again, I'll just have to pull them out, take them to the workshop and bring them well polished. Because if I just uh, did this here, probably I'll not get what I want to get. So this is another bedroom the headboard area, curtain, curtain rods, uh, some whatever, uh, wall panels on that, the floor, and then I walk into the bathroom. Again, again, the glass partition here, and the mixer, and then uh, the spout, and then the shower head, then we have a vanity we are supplying, vanity mirror and the light, and that is it. Then walk into the walk-in closet, the same treatment. When you walk in, actually here, it went and took a turn. For me, I'll just go and take a turn to one side so that I have a bit of space so that I don't have to be so squeezed. If you check on the floor, this is a 600 by 600 millimeter tile. It is already been covered by the cabinet, meaning this tile, the space that is remaining is roughly around 500 millimeter. Then another 100 on this other side that uh, I'm being, uh, cal uh, that I'm calculating from the other tile that is entering the other side, leaving me with roughly 600 millimeter. So if I wanted to do something, it is too squeezed. I just need life. I don't want to be in a, in a too much congested space. So I think I'll uh, just do an, an L shape and then do the arrangement and do the finishes nicely. I'll just do a proper job for that. Then, so guys, this is the study and also an office for my client. He's not based here. He will be coming uh, from abroad or wherever, I think, uh, in the US. When he lands in, he wants to work. So currently, this is the look on my, on my left side. We have cabinets all the way 
this has been provided for the TV, more cabinets on this side, a door on this side, then cabinets here, the gypsum ceiling as you see, it is coming suspended and it never had a place to go so it was left hanging there. There was this wall that was left here, I think uh, currently it has been treated as a headboard wall because we have uh, uh, a wall bracket here, a wall bracket, a socket, and a socket on this side. So we have come up with our own layout, and we are looking at the way the sun goes and how it sits. Probably most of the times the sun will be coming from the, from the west, from the east going to the west, so it hits this wall in the morning. So in my opinion, I'm thinking this should be the front side of the house the front side of the office so we are doing some cabinets along this wall beautifully done well arranged and we'll have our tv in the middle so that when my client sits here probably we have a desk a nice beautiful desk around this point this becomes the back wall as he sits again we are doing some nice beautiful cabinetry on this wall so that when he's doing his zoom meeting his google meeting whatever meetings the back wall as he speaks or has, as he sits is a statement also and it's not as boring as it would have been him sitting on that side then on these sides where we have cabinets here and cabinets here i've decided not to do so much i'm a very simple guy in terms of design i don't like complications and i'm not too playful so i'm ripping off this and ripping off this so that i do some beautiful wall fin finish on that wall and a beautiful wall finish on this wall to just also give character to this room so that we don't leave it as a uh, as, as storage everywhere so we have storage on the on the on the front side storage on the on the back side then the walls we leave it plain or we leave we give it some treatment then i have my beautiful curtain my shear then i will do it in such a way that even my ceiling is not suspended like this it will have to go all the way around so that it's one thing and if it's not working then there is no need to put a ceiling i would rather just run a cornice nice beautiful light and leave it like that and those are the details that we are going to face and remember whatever i've told you on the on the clip some of the things might might be altered some things might be added some things might be removed because during the design process we we propose things during the construction process it's again another completely different thing because things come up you realize other things and uh, also ideas come up and you end up either adding or subtracting but 90 or 80 percent of what i've already stated is what we're expecting i also don't want to preempt completely what we are doing in the on this particular project but i want you guys to stay tuned wait and see how the transformation how things are going to be transformed on this project so that you believe that seriously Keith Interiors is the best interior design company in the 254 and we are coming big time. Guys, that is it for the transformation story about this project. We are intimate about transforming spaces and in 254, we are the best. And thank you so much for taking your time to just watch our video. Do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and on our social media pages. At Keith Interiors, where style meets elegance.